This last step, principle of transeutropin, I'm just going to mention very briefly because this is an optional step. But what happens in the human body as we age, we have a reduction of certain hormones in our body. One of the most vital hormones that we have a reduction is called growth hormone. Transeutropin is the first uh, substance that has been shown to clinically increase growth hormone levels in the body. It's a growth hormone releasing hormone analog. It mimics the, for the, the action of natural uh, growth hormone releasing hormone in the body and it results in a natural increase of growth hormone that your own body makes. So normally the only way to increase growth hormone is by injecting growth hormone, a synthetic recombinant substance into your body and that the levels come up. Whereas with transdetropin, you're sending the same message as your body normally made at a higher point when you were younger and you tell the message goes to the pituitary gland and tells the pituitary gland, hey, make more growth hormone. So it's your own endogenous, endogenous means what your body makes itself, your own endogenous levels of growth hormone that come up. And the studies that have been done show within the first 90 minutes of using transetropin, in 117 patients that we measured using chemiluminescent radio amino acid levels of growth hormone, 463 percent increase of your own body's growth hormone levels within the first 90 minutes of usage. Within five weeks, from baseline to 90 minutes, over 1,754 percent increase in endogenous growth hormone levels. Now, what does this mean? What this means, essentially, is that the growth hormone that we're producing now is your own body's growth hormone and allows you to reestablish the same physiological parameters that you had when you were younger, anywhere from 5 to 20 years back. The problem is that with growth hormone injection therapy, growth hormone levels go up, but the goal of therapy seems to increase a substance called IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor type 1. Now, everybody remembers that insulin is good or bad? Bad, because it's pro-inflammatory. Insulin-like growth factor is very similar to insulin, and it actually also is pro-inflammatory. And in actuality now, there have been more than 100 studies done to show the correlation between increased IGF levels and cancer. So the goal of therapy with, these doc with, with, the, with the doctors that are using growth hormone injection therapy is to increase your IGF level, but that causes cancer. Transetropin is the first substance that increases growth hormone, but reduces insulin and IGF levels consistently. Cortisol levels have been measured, pro-inflammatory molecule levels consistently drop. IGF levels have been measured, pro-inflammatory molecule levels consistently drop. Insulin, pro-inflammatory molecule levels consistently drop. But the most dynamic aspect of transetropin is the subjective response that patients experience. From athletes to people in their 90s, virtually everybody has some positive effect. Statistically, 8 out of 10 people continue using transetropin. Some people aren't in tune with their bodies and can't, res can't appreciate some of the changes, and some people expect a euphoric event, and it's not a euphoric event. You don't feel stronger. You don't feel like you, you can uh, do more, have more endurance, yet people within three, four months are, are experiencing better concentration. Things that used to bother them don't bother them. They're getting off their antidepressants. Within two weeks, a week, people experience changes in sleep pattern. They don't need as much sleep, but yet their sleep is more uh, it's a deeper, uh, deeper sleep because your REM sleep, which is the rapid eye movement sleep, which is a deep state of sleep, actually increases from an hour and a half to maybe two hours. The reason we know this is because people start reporting more vivid dreams. The dream activity increases. So there's, there's a whole cascade of events that takes place with transetropin. It increases your growth hormone levels, but in, in, in actuality, it also uh, causes an accentuation of all the hormonal responses in your body. So you have all the sex hormones that go up, all the different thyroid modulation, everything starts to increase. Um, it doesn't necessarily replace anything, but it does, uh, it does, with the exception of thyroid and with the exception of progesterone, I don't use anything else for any type of hormone, no DHEA, no pregnenolone, nothing. I, I, we haven't found that to be necessary because transetropin seems to take care of it. The only things are people that may be thyroid deficient may still need some thyroid, and women with severe hormonal problems may need some extra progesterone. The contraindications are if a person is pregnant or if they have a pituitary tumor, which uh, prolactin level or an IGF level has to be drawn. Uh, and there's a lot of other information on transetropin, but I think that I'm just going to stop it here, and then we'll be able to take any questions. Right now, there are two options for patients to increase their growth hormone levels. And using transetropin, we're actually getting more than just increasing growth hormone levels. But the two options are one, injectable growth hormone, or transetropin. Now, when you compare the two, the price of injectable growth hormone ranges anywhere from $1,000 to $2,500 per month, whereas transetropin is $175 a month to $200 a month. The, the more important issues than just price is the efficacy. 
Transitropin results are evident within the first, anywhere from the first two days to the first two weeks, whereas with growth hormone injection therapy, most patients can go three to six months and never experience any of the changes themselves. And we've got numerous cases of doctors themselves that were on growth hormone injectable therapies, never saw any benefits three, four, five, six, ten years out, and then starting transitropin within two weeks could see the benefits. So from an efficacy standpoint, you see results much faster. The type of results you see are much, much more pronounced with transitropin. And the nicest thing is that the side effect profile. With transitropin, there has been no side effects, unless you consider acne in patients that are 40, which to me is proof positive that you're reverting the physiology to that of a younger state. Or in some patients, uh, postmenopausal women have started menstruating again. Well, they haven't been happy, but it again shows proof that you're reverting the physiology to that of a younger state. Whereas with injectable growth hormone, there are many, many side effects that are known. Carpal tunnel syndrome, joint effusions, acromegaly, um, all these different types of problems, uh, cardiomyopathies, they're not side effects that really anybody wants to deal with. So from a cost perspective, it's better. From an efficacy standpoint, it's more effective. From a response time, patients experience changes much faster. And from a side effect profile, it's much safer. So there's really not much uh, comparison. Oh, and the last thing, who wants to take an injection when you can put drops on your skin and rub it in?